afternoon. Right, sorry I've done a video for a bit, but yeah, life gets in the way, doesn't it, sometimes. Um, yeah, I've uh, been fishing a few times, spotty dotties, uh, haven't managed to get out yet on the rays or really smooth hands or anything else like that, but I just thought I'd do a, a little video just to, well, because I haven't done one for a bit, and, and just... Uh, this time of year is coming round uh, just two of the rigs that I will be mainly using if you see me out on the beach and and you want to know what I'm fishing with these are the two rigs that you will see me with uh, there might be slight variations from day to day but these are basically the two rigs right, first rig I'll show you is a one up clip down rig which as you can see we got the swivel at the top. We come down to a crimp, a bead, a swivel, another bead, SDR spring, another crimp. And on that swivel, especially on the ones these, I, I like to put a, a tiny touch of rig tubing on. Just helps kick it away from the rig body. And then it goes on for about foot and a half, just over a foot and a half. I was out there, it's a little trident clip. And a lot of us lads, you know, on this rig as well, you could put trident roll to clip on there. Or the new, um, sorry, sorry, forgotten what it's called. But you know, you could put that on. But we all carry these leads in our boxes and we all use these leads. And on the rigs, we use an imp, we use a solo clip, we use whatever rig clip we use. But we use these leads. Now these leads cost a little bit more than the other leads because, look, they've got a bloody bait clip on it. So this rig is made in conjunction with them, but it will also fit a rotor clip on, or an imp on, or a solo clip on. I've already done it and it measures up and it does because the distance is pretty much similar. So, then the business end, we've got two, that is one, two, Sukuma top guns. Now top guns, I love these hooks, two reasons, good and strong, sharp and the brilliant for meaty baits whether it be crab whether it be squid and mackerel or squid and bluey or bluey and sand eel or you know whatever your ray bait or your, your round bait is good wide gap good sharp hook as well and then a lot of the time I just do a little spinny spinny round the thing but when we're going for rays and rays having that little bit of abrasion on the mouth <clears throat> I do like a little bit of a thing which helps me push it up push it down so yeah so the rig clipped bottom up goes on okay, on your weight Fold them up, fold them up, fold them up, fold them up. Boom. It's there. See? Wait. There. And when you put a little bit of pressure on that, as you would for casting, you can see it puts that into spring. Now the lines. Lines again. Raise. And a single hook and the rays and the smooth arm because you know the sharks and they have got abrasive skin. The body of my rig is 80 pound Rover X plus 10. That in 80 pound. I like this line because it's good abrasion line. And then the snood amnesia 30 pound. £30, generally, 
and this is goes with any ray fishing or smooth arms. A fish a session, and I'm not being big headed, but you can you can catch a few in a session. So the 30 pound line, after every fish I've caught and I've unhooked, I always go and I check my snood line. And I will never reuse a hound rig or a ray rig after a session that I have caught fish because A, two things, you lose a fish, it's got them things in its in its gob because you're too tight to have a chip, put a new snood on or just break the rig down and do it again. And these things, unless you want to walk around with a set of this shit in your mouth, it's not good for fish and yeah. You know, you got you you got to think these things are coming here. We're catching them. We want to continue catching them for a few years because it's good sport. So yeah, always check your snoods after you catch a hound, huss, ray, anything that's got any sort of teeth or abrasiveness. Just check your snoods, even with flatties and that on the smaller rigs. Just check your snoods because. You never know that next fish that you're looking to could be a fish of a lifetime and you lose it down to laziness in it at the end of the day. Right, so that's that's the bigger fish rig. You know, ears open. And then for me general scratching around or flatty bashing, I use a two-up flapper, you say. A two-up flapper, yeah, it is a two-up flapper. But at the top of this rig, boop, there it is. It's a genie link, a bead, a swivel, a bead, a crimp, and then we come down to the halfway down the line. We've got the usual sort of setup there that you would have on a flapper rig: crimp, bead, swivel, bead, crimp. And then at the bottom, you got your genie link. Now there's a reason why this thing has got a genie link at both ends. Because as you see, I said, it's a two up flapper. But it's a reversible one. Because now, it's a one up, one down. And when I go flatty bashing, I like to use other rigs like a Wessex rig which has one rig going down and one rig up which is a, a one up one down and I always start the flatty bashing as a one up one down because a lot of the time you find you're catching on your bottom hook which is you know it's because your bottom hook is beyond the weight and it's down and it's on the ground and this one will be the same as well when it's in. But there is that time, there is, and it and it's been quite often recently that the fish, the flatties that have been catching the place, have been on the one up and the bait and everything for that one down hasn't been touched. So what you do is you take your weight off, you swip it around, and now you got two up, which is just a basic two up flapper. So both the, the hook lengths are above the weight, above the weight. And it might lead you to be coming in with double headers. Or if you're getting double headers anyway, with a one up, one down, you keep it the same. But this just gives you that option if all your fish are coming on that top hook on the one up, one down, it gives you that option to possibly start getting your double up, double headers. Because let's face it, when we all go out and we're getting double headers and that, boosts your confidence, doesn't it? Everyone likes getting a bit of a confidence boost, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, right, let's talk about the lines. On this one, it is still the Rover X. 10 times, but 
it's 50 pound because generally when I'm flatty bashing I'll only be using four ounce weights five ounce tops so that's safe that's happy and then I'm easier again well again this one it's 15 pound that's just me then on the hook link I've got I have got the little rubber stock couple of sequins and then that one is a size one mustard viking now this time of year I do like these hooks because whether using fresh black blow or crab it's a good all round hook good all round hook and I also as well let's see if I can find them I like to every now and again the old glow beads, you know, the rubber ones. If you want to add a little bit more of a tractant, you just thread it up and it's on there, ready. But all these things, you play around when you're there. I think you'll agree with me that for rig that has got a little bit technical aspect behind it it is still very kiss keeping it simple and that is two rigs this time of year going all the way through around September October are the ones that I will basically be chucking out 90% there'll be a few other rigs I'll do another video again when I can get myself a cameraman uh, of me tying them all right, chaps. Sorry it's been a while. But, you know, keep it simple. And hopefully you get results. Uh, that's all I really want for everyone. Everyone get fish. Keep it simple. Out of the dead. Yeah.